Today I'm going to be changing the front wheel hubs on my 2013 GS350. Um, I believe the process, not only the process, but the parts should be identical for the 2014 and 15. I can't speak for anything after that, but chances are parts are the same or very similar, but the process is definitely the same. So we begin by lifting up the car. I've jacked up the car, I've chalked the wheels. Now this part is extremely important, especially if you're using the scissor uh, jack that comes in your car. The moment you use that thing and lift up the car, it becomes very unstable. So I, please chalk your wheels. Make sure the car does not roll in any direction. Trust me, <laughs> it'll not, it'll, it won't be fun if it does and rolls off that stupid jack. It's time to remove the wheel. I am using 21 millimeter. Next step is to remove the caliper. We are going to remove the caliper and hang it up so that it's um, it's not held. So it's held together by the by the brake line. Make sure there's no stress on the brake line. So the moment you remove the two bolts holding uh, the caliper, you have to hang it using a string, a wire, anything. Hang it. Make sure it's suspended and its weight is not being carried by that brake line. So that's the next step. For that, we're going to use a 17 millimeter. Now there are two bolts holding this thing in on the other side on the inside approximately here and here on the other side i suggest you use an impact or a breaker bar because these things do tend to get seized One of the bolts and the caliper isn't budging, so it's time to use some something powerful to dislodge it. This was expected. Let's see if I can get you a better view from uh, under there. All right, so I managed to get the second bolt off, 17 millimeter. Having something like this to loosen it up really helps, but obviously having the right equipment is more important. So having this really large impact, you know, does the job. You lift the car high enough, you angle that impact back there. And uh, pull it right out to give you a better view. Two holes, one right here one below that's what i removed all right so i've hung the caliper on a string off the spring however you want to do it just make sure it's hanging so the moment you want to do the bolt holding the caliper all you got to do is slide it out it literally slides out because you know it grabs the rotor so the moment those two bolts are out just slide it out string it and hang it this is the view from from the top of the wheel well so now I have the uh, the rotor. I gotta remove it. As far as I know, it's not held by any bolt. So I gotta do all I gotta do is bang it from this side. Hopefully to dislodge it, it'll just freaking fall off. Should be fairly easy. So I managed to dislodge the rotor by taking this beautiful hammer and banging it around the perimeter. By banging the perimeter, you're sending vibrations and um, are detaching all that grime that's built up. So I'm gonna take the rotor and simply slide it off so the next step will be to take a large um, impact piece and open this nut now as you can see there's a little indentation you're gonna have to bang it out it's indented specifically so the nut never comes loose so I'm gonna take a screwdriver bang out this indentation put a impact piece on it and and um, undo it open it up this will uh, free the wheel hub from the actual axle. Now, 
case in point this is an all-wheel drive model which means every single wheel will have an axle going to it which you know will spin the rotor if you have a, a model that is a, a not a four-wheel drive two of your wheels I don't remember whether front or rear will not have an axle so it'll be far easier all you have to do is remove the uh, four bolts back there holding the actual uh, actual hub to the knuckle and be done with it but with the all-wheel drive model every single wheel will have the axle going through it let's dislodge this all right um, I got the socket ready so remember this is the multi-point 30 millimeter socket that we're going to use on this big axle nut. This is the new one. Now that I've removed the axle nut, it is time to remove the um, four bolt holding the actual uh, hub. One, two, three and four they are 17 mil so we have to reach behind and undo them All right, so with the right tools, everything comes out fairly easy, despite the fact that everything was seized and I had to apply a nutcracker on this uh, hub for you know quite a while. But whether you get this or something similar is irrelevant. You need a breaker fluid, and that's extremely important. So one tip, make sure you rotate your steering wheel from time to time to get access and clearance to the bolts, because when the wheel is you know facing straight, you will not be able to access both of these nuts. So what I did was turn it one way, pop these two off, then turn the wheel to the right and pop these two off. Used big drill, big impact, and then a small one to finish the job. However, if you don't have one, you can still use a breaker bar. I suggest you get a breaker bar. It's going to be a pain in the butt because after all the breaker bar goes in here and has to have enough clearance to exit the wheel well and you can press on it. You can do it. Uh, it'll be hard. I once changed the uh, wheel hubs on my BMW, it took me five hours to change the front ones because I was using the breaker bars, but I did it. So nevertheless, I suggest you spend the money and get an impact, it'll make your life so much easier. Now the actual hub, I've driven on it last week and thank God I put the car in storage because right now the wheel with the, on the hub is just like sliding up and down, you know, it's moving around a lot and that's dangerous, the wheel can come off. So this hub is dead it is toast it is completely 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 bad the replacement i'm using is a move these are not expensive about 150 each so we'll see how this bad boy holds up
Ну, как-то так. Угу. When you're putting on back the, the, the new lug nut, make sure you torque it, not torque it, but spin it until it stops moving so the axle's flush with the uh, wheel hub, okay? And only then, after you're done, it's, it's, more, it's about half an inch onto the axle. And then when you're done, you're gonna take a piece of metal, chisel, and bang a notch in here so that the metal goes into the groove and guarantees that this nut's gonna co not gonna come off at some point when you're driving. Take a hammer, a good hammer with some weight on it or you know any weight, take a piece of metal or chisel and just notch the new axle knot not onto the axle. Should be flush with nuts sticking out this much and the axle not going out close to half an inch or until the nut stops moving. Do not underdo it. All right, so the wheel's back on, and um, I'm about to go and test drive this thing to make sure you know we did it right and that there's no knocks or sounds or noises. So um, this is just very important to do. Obviously, when you get in the car, start off slowly, make sure that this thing is quiet, that there's no unusual noises coming from it, and then as you slowly gain speed, continue monitoring for sound. Make sure the steering wheel doesn't shake, that it doesn't, um, you know sway to any one side although it might because alignment might be thrown off a little bit but bottom line is this when you replace the hub when you start driving you should feel like the car is performing much much better all the sounds and noises and vibrations you've heard before should go away a couple of tips because during this entire process you'll be getting in the car and turning it on and off to turn the wheel left and right to give yourself some clearance on both sides of the wheel to um, take the bolts off and then put them back on, um, you're gonna be probably pressing the brakes a few times. The moment you press those brakes, your caliper, which is gonna be hanging, is gonna squeeze, right? That's natural. And to unsqueeze it, um, you're gonna have to, um, well, you ha you're gonna have to unsqueeze it back to give it enough clearance so that you can put it right back on the, on the, on the rotor. So use a long, thick screwdriver or some sort of a long, th uh, or even a breaker bar, stick it between the, brake pads and leverage it both directions to make sure the brake pads come apart far enough so that there's enough clearance to put the caliper back on the 